Hi everyone. Whilst the world is on lockdown and people like myself are in quarantine, I have been struggling to find things to do over the past three weeks. So for the last 24 hours, I have compiled a list of things that I can do whilst in quarantine. And the first thing is this. This is my isolation climbing gear check video. So I am going to start off with carabiners. Some people may know them as crabs. There are different types of carabiners. You've got locking carabiners, twist lock carabiners, snap gate carabiners, crabs, whatever you like to call them. So first of all, to check your carabiner, depending on what type it is, if it's a twist lock like this one, the first thing you're going to want to do is check the opening. And I do that by pushing it open and making sure that it snaps back nicely. Second thing you're going to want to do with the carabiner is twist that shut and make sure that it doesn't open. And then before putting it back down or putting it back in your gear, make sure that you keep that open so it doesn't seize closed. The next thing you're going to do is check the actual metal work. Starting at the bottom here, because this is where a lot of the carabiners get most use, you're going to check that it's not overly polished or that there's no groove starting to come in the bottom of the carabiner. Now, each carabiner is made can be made by different companies and each carabiner has, will generally have um, its own recommendations by its manufacturer of what is allowed in where in the metalwork. Usually if you've got anything from one to two mil of wear in your carabiner, then you need to take that out of your gear. Here is an example of a carabiner that isn't working, so I'm gonna be taking this out of my gear. Um, snap it open and it doesn't close. It doesn't spring back nicely. So I'm gonna check the inside of that just there, see if there's anything in the way. Now I might see if I can get some WD-40 in there, see if that frees it up. But at the moment, I wouldn't use that carabiner. It doesn't spring back nicely. Here's another example of a different type of carabiner. This is a snap gate carabiner. Again, it's a bit old and worn as this. So just by visually looking at it, I wouldn't use that carabiner. And here is a newer example of a snap gate carabiner. Which opens nicely. Next thing we're gonna go on to is slings. So slings can be used to put round rocks, trees, to use as protection when climbing. Now, I haven't been outdoor climbing for quite some time because of my illness and my ailments, but looking at this carabiner, I'm going to this sling even, I'm going to run it through my fingers and check every inch of it on both sides. And as you can see from this one, it's hardened up and it's really stiff. I, I probably wouldn't use that just because of that basis. So, bye bye sling. Same with this one. Again, it's all down to the amount of how much it's been used, how much it hasn't been used as well. You want to check for things like furring on the edges, any little cuts and grooves, checking it all over. And as well, where it's joined together here, you want to make sure that there are no none of the stitching is coming away or coming loose. There's another sling in a lot better condition. Again, it's all down to the way that you store your gear as well. You don't want, if it's been wet out on a crag, you don't want to just chuck it back in your bag and leave it at home in your bag. You want to make sure that you're properly looking after it. Harnesses, so I have two harnesses here. Uh, one out of its bag and one in its bag, so I'll just quickly take this one out. So we've got two wild country harnesses here. 
that's what I'll come to you as well. Yeah. So this was my first harness, which I got back in 2012. So most harnesses have a 10 year sh shelf life. Um, but I wouldn't use this harness now, purely because I've lost so much weight. The last time I put this on, it was dangerously, dangerously loose. So I ended up using a centre harness when I went to uh, the boardroom down in uh, Cheshire, Chester even. So yeah, so I took this with me, realised that it was far too big. So yeah, so still again, just checking every lock, checking everything unlocks nicely. Uh, different harnesses have different locking systems. You want to check your abseil loop. Again, check there's no stitching come away. Check fairing. So just make sure everything is in good condition. So I wouldn't use this purely because it is too big. But it probably still has another good couple of years of life left in it. Also as well, make sure that it's got a CE mark on it. Everything you use wants to have a CE mark on it. I think even carabiners will have codes on them and they'll tell you that they are safe to use. So that is that harness. This harness here, a lot more my size nowadays. So again, you just want to check it all over. Even if it's a new product, if you buy something new, give it a check over because the last thing you want to do is get out onto your crag and you check it when you get there and it's broken, it's not fit for purpose. So check it when you buy it, check it when you get home. Um, after each use as well, give it a good check that nothing's snagged, nothing's come loose, that all your locking um, systems are all in place as well. Check your gear loops are nice and strong. So that's harnesses. Climbing shoes. Now you've got different types of climbing shoes. You've got aggressive climbing shoes, which have got a nice big curve in them. Then you've got, um, what's the way to describe it really? Um, more easier fit around the foot, though, so less hugging. These are an in-between. They're slightly aggressive, they've got a nice curve in them. Whereas these ones are completely flat. There's nothing in them really. These are my first pair. So I'll start off with this one. What you want to be doing is check in the sole on this one. Part of the sole is coming away at the back, just from use, you want to check the bottom, make sure that nothing's coming away, all the threads nice. Check the insides as well. And the insides of these ones lost the sole, so that one's uh, not gonna be very comfortable anymore. So whereas with this one, last Sportiva, beautifully comfortable inside, got good lining in it. Yeah, there's chalk all over it, but that's just what happens. <laughs> But yeah, just make sure that this one's got a little bit of fraying on the side. Your shoe really isn't a, isn't really a safety feature. It's more about helping you out whilst you're climbing. But yeah, just trying to keep them in good condition. That's the best thing you can do. Chalk bag, make sure that it closes properly, that there's nowhere that the chalk's gonna escape from. Uh, I have a few chalk bags, all different styles this one's a bit old and tatty but what you want to do is because a lot of people do leave their chalk inside the chalk bag but the thing is same with any spare chalk that you've got chalk can clump and go hard over time so if you don't keep it soft and keep it moving what can happen is it just clumps together so when you get to a climbing center or you get to a crag you can just end up putting your hands in and big clumps of chalk just falling out all over the place. So that's not really what you want to keep it nice and free. Next thing, climbing rope. All climbing rope, if you buy it from shops, say Cotswolds, Go Outdoors, Blacks, anywhere that supplies climbing rope, um, specific climbing, center, uh, climbing shops or from climbing centers, should all come with this little tab on it. And again, this is the CE mark and it'll, it has to be certified by CE. It'll tell you 
what the diameter of the rope is. This is 9.8 millimeters and it'll, it'll tell you the length. If you buy your rope from a supplier such as Entreprise, who I work for, or any other climbing rope company, if you go and buy a length of rope specifically for climbing and it hasn't got this on, you need to you need to ask them, especially if you're a climbing centre and you're getting new rope or reels of rope, to supply the stickers or the tabs that will go on the end and then there's little plastic sheath, sheaths that you just melt on there. So if you're a general everyday climber, make sure that your rope is CE certified. And then what you're gonna do, I'm not gonna do it with this whole rope because I've checked it already, is you're gonna run the rope through your hands, you're gonna check it, look in again for any frays on this outer um, sheath of the rope, just check it through and make sure that there are no snags, rips or anything like that. If any of the inside is coming through, then you don't want to use that either. Once you've finished with your rope for the day, if it's wet, the best thing to do is daisy chain it, leave it to dry somewhere in a utility room or anything like that. So let it drip dry and then store it away nicely. Uh, what else with rope? Um, if you're gonna wash your rope, just soapy water, no detergents or anything like that. And the last two things, ice axes. If you do winter climbing or indoor ice climbing, your ice axes might get quite a lot of use. So what you want to do is just have a good check of them, make sure that there's no cracks or breaks in either end of your either end of the ice axe on the axe end especially make sure there's no chips fractures or anything like that and then check the full length of the handle make sure that's not broken no cracks no dents anything like that and same on the cord here because this is a cord that you're going to use to put your carabiner around your wrist and stuff like that. So that's what you want to check with them. And the last thing I'm not going to get them out, crampons. Your crampons have obviously got metal parts on it, which is dangerous, so I would always store them inside a, a specific bag for crampons that are from padded, and that means no one's going to get hurt whilst uh, handling them. And also on a crampon bag, especially the, um, the, this specific model here, you can put your name, address, your phone number, all on there so if you get lost or if this is in your bag when you, you're climbing and if you have an accident it's got all your information on it there as well last thing first aid kit make sure it's replenished before you do go out on any trips if you've had a cut of graze make sure you refill it with plasters bandages that kind of stuff uh, sterilize wipes uh, and then yeah, there's obviously the kit that you, the bag that you store all in. So this is my bag that I use to carry all my main gear. Make sure that it's fit for purpose really, that you're not gonna have holes all over it, that it's comfortable as well. Make sure the bag that you are using, that you're carrying all this gear in, is comfortable. Um, and last thing, uh, rope bag. If you were gonna use a bag specific for or specifically for carrying your rope, like this one, a, DM, a DMM one, inside of it, you've got this bit that you can lay your rope out so it keeps it off the floor. But after each use as well, I just check the inside of it, make sure there's no sand, gravel, grit, that it's not wet, that it's not dirty. So if you're gonna store your rope in there, if there's contaminants in there that can get onto your rope, then that could ruin your fun. Definitely the last thing. Uh, belay devices such as this, the Gree Gree. Um, so this is made by a company called Petzl. What you want to do is, with this is just make sure that all the free moving parts are running smoothly. So this bit is your lowering mechanism. It hasn't got any contaminants, dirt or anything on the inside, just in there. Same with 
book be lay devices again just check them out at work make sure there's no sharp edges nowhere that your rope can get snagged and it's not overly warm so that is my iso climbing gear check video if you like this give us a thumbs up subscribe and uh, thank you very much for watching